Alright, here's our next example. We're going to do pretty much the same thing. First, we're going to try to get it compared to zero. So we need to get zero on one side. I always like to have a positive leading coefficient. So I'm going to keep everything on this side. So I need to move this stuff over here. To do that, I'm of course to do the opposite. So I will subtract. So minus 4x minus 4. Okay, so now we have a nice little polynomial. I need to find the critical numbers at this point. So to do that, I'm going to, uh, they're only going to be zeros. I don't have any variables in the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and factor by grouping. So I will get x squared, x plus 1, factor out a negative 4, whoops, and x plus 1. At this point in time, I can group those together. That is difference of squares. Whoops, that's supposed to be a 0. Uh, this is difference of squares, so I can factor that. x plus 2, x minus 2. So my zeros, I'm going to set each one of these equal to zero and solve. Okay, here's our number line. And what we're going to do is we're going to say we zero zeros of negative two, and negative one, and a positive two. And again, that's going to divide our graph into four parts. So left of negative two, in between negative one, negative two, negative one and two, and then anything larger than 2. So normally what we do is we would just plug in test values. So plug in like negative 3 to figure out what this is, whether it's positive or negative. Here plug in negative 1 and a half, 0, and then maybe 3. And just plug it in either here or here and determine whether it's positive or negative. But luckily we have a decent idea of what our graph looks like even on this one. So because we're looking at this one, our leading coefficient is positive. Uh, the degree is odd. So what should happen is the left side will go down the right side will go up. Each of the zeros has a multiplicity of 1, so our graph should look a little bit like that. So again, we're going to basically have two sections. This side is below the x-axis, below the x-axis, whereas this side is above the x-axis, and this side is above the x-axis. So let's go and break it up into basically uh, whether it could be equal to, I mean, uh, whether it's positive or negative. So what we'll do is we'll go back and look and determine what they're looking for in terms of our answer. So we should come up here and say it wants it to be a less than or equal to zero. And what that means is negative or zero. Well, there it looks like there are two sections that are negative. It's the ones highlighted in yellow where the graph would be below the x-axis. So say negative infinity comma negative two. However, this time we are going to use a bracket. And the reason we're going to use a bracket on this one is because it could be less than or equal to. These values right here are the zeros. There's, they're going to be included in our set. And we'll say negative 1, 2 with a bracket. All right, so that's our solution for this polynomial inequality.